While humble shepherds watch their flocks all seated on the ground, an angel of the Lord appeared and glory shone around. Fear not, he said, for sudden dread had seized their troubled minds. Glad tidings of great joy I bring to you and all mankind. For unto you this day is born in the city of David a child whose name is Christ the Lord. Well, there we are. Christmas it is, of course, and Christmas would not be Christmas without Scotty McClue's Christmas message. I think you would agree with me there, and I would certainly agree with you. I'm just getting you sorted out here. So what I thought I'd do is I'd pop up tonight and say hi, and uh, also deliver you a little Christmas message in case I don't see you tomorrow, because obviously... Uh, tomorrow is Christmas Day, and uh, we probably will, but it's also Sunday, and Sunday means Scotty McClure. It can only mean one thing Sunday, and that is Scotty McClure, just for you, Dinky Doo, live on Facebook Live. So, what I thought I'd do is I'd pop up and say hi to you all tonight, and then we can see what we think there. A lot of you actually are on there. All the best Scotties is Colin Roger. Gavin McCoy is watching in Oxford. I was thinking about you today, Gavin, down uh, on the Cowley Road there. Merry Christmas, sir, says Matthew McGoldrick. Very Merry Christmas, Scotty boy. Dinky doo, says Alan Laurie. There's Francis Basili, one of the finest um, Lovable lassies of the big switchboard Scotty McClue ever had. Happy, happy Christmas to you, fabulous man and three kisses. Francis, my darling, a very, very happy Christmas to you. Lovely, lovely to see you, a beautiful lady. Merry Christmas, Scotty. Have a fabulous Christmas and all the best for 2017. Scotty, have a bottle for you. When will I catch you, says Mark. <laughs> yoo -hoo, says Gavin McCoy. Merry Christmas, Scotty, says Brian. Sean McBride's watching, Ian Walker's watching, Michael Yule's watching, Julianne Scott is watching. Guys, I've really just popped up to say Happy Christmas to you. That's the most important thing. So that's what we're actually doing there. And I thought I'd just do it live on Facebook for you. I seem to be at a sort of strange angle. Are you getting a funny angle um, that we're getting tonight? Is that better? Uh, anyway, uh, what I was going to say is I know Christmas uh, for many people, Big Andy and Campbell's Lang, Happy Crimbo, he says. I know Christmas for many people um, is uh, the shops, presents, going out to watch night services, going to mass, carol singing. But uh, regardless of your background, your religious, your creed, whatever, don't forget that Christmas is also about the birth of the Christ child, the birth of a baby. Graham Stewart's watching, lovely to see him. And what does a baby signify but a new life, new beginnings? I've always said that I thought New Year should be at Easter when the world renews. And uh, somebody laughed at me. They all laughed at Christopher Columbus when he said the world was round. They all laughed when Edison discovered sound. But I said, yes, New Year should be at Easter. Ha, <laughs> This guy believes New Year should be at Easter. And then I found out that New Year was at Easter. So they had to get that round them. I shall tell you that for nothing. Dave Hemsley's watching. Jim Stephen Gibb, sheer, 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 sheer. Scotty, absolutely. Get sharing on Facebook Live and let them know that Scotty's here with the Scotty McClue Christmas message. So as I say, it's about a baby. It's about new beginnings. And there's absolutely no doubt 2016 is nearly behind us. And 2017 is about new beginnings. I feel it very strongly, as I say, that there are discussions at a very, very high level at the moment about Scotty McClure and what should the next step be. Is it television? Is it radio? I was watching, and I know they're great shows. Let's not have any doubts about it. Uh, Morecambe and Wise, The Two Ronnies, Les Dawson, all these tremendous greats of comedy. But it would be quite nice now to have programmes with um, funny people 
who are living and who are actually dwelling on the earth among us. I know these great comedians will never leave us, and they've gone into the next room. Evening, Scotty, says Dave Helmsley. And uh, who else have we got? Merry Christmas, Scotty, says Stephen Nunnally down in, uh, in Lancashire there. Merry Christmas to you, Stephen. And Stephen and I go way, way back. Steph, McElheron, Scotty McClure, I think we should get a dinky-doo Christmas baby birth on air. When was it born? And we should name the child. The mother should stand with it. I remember taking a call one night uh, on the phone-in, and this was... Um, <laughs> A baby, uh, a lady said, I'm having a baby, Scotty. So we shouted, count the contractions, get the towels, get the hot water. And uh, this was April or something. She said, no, no, it's not till September. And I said, oh, dear, oh, dear. We're getting us all excited there. 2017, no enemies. Let's work together to enjoy life, says Mark. Absolutely, Mark. That's what it should be about. And I'm hoping that the superpowers will get together and give each other a pat on the back and uh, stop all the nonsense. See if they can stop the nonsense. Alan Brown, Merry Christmas, Scotty. The Browns in Washington, D.C. are listening. Love you, my friend. Alan, I love you too. You're a fabulous guy. We were students together, and um, Alan is in Washington, D.C. with the loveliest, loveliest family. A great guy. Lovely to hear from you. Uh, do I have a dinky-doo Christmas, says David Seals? Of course you do. Cartoon Cavalcade. I'm looking for a presenter, Scotty. <laughs> Fantastic. No, it's interesting. What is the next step for Scotty McClue? Because um, clearly you can see that programmers are a little anxious about something live, about something interesting, about something new. That's what I find funny. And their answer is very much, uh, Oi, from Cleethorpes, says David Sales. <laughs> David, lovely to hear from you. I used to broadcast to Cleethorpes. I remember walking the beach at Cleethorpes one afternoon and down came one of these um, Argo cats or whatever, and it was the Coast Guard. And he said, I mean, this is serious, this. He said, could you go in now, sir? The tide's coming in. And I said, does it come in quite quick? And he said, well, look down at your feet. And there was water washing about. And he said, when we stopped just a few seconds ago to talk to you, that bit was dry. So I took to my heels. I had old Reith the Labrador with me, Lord Reith, and we took off. Can we get your wee tune dance with your granny and your auntie Fanny? There's a moose loose about this hoose. Dance with your granny and your auntie Fanny right across the floor. When you get to the other side, shut the flaming door. Uh, David, did you do the park run today in Cleethorpes? Says Mark. Ah, interesting. So there we are. We've got serious talking going there. Marvellous. Richard Frediani is watching. Richard Frediani, what a week it has been for you. Richard Frediani is the top news editor in this country. I can see that unequivocally and without equivocation. He is uh, the top news editor in this country. And of course, um, you know, he has had quite a week of it because the wonderful Mark Austin, I believe, left um, ITV News. I used to call it ITN. You see, when I worked for ITV, it was ITN and all the companies had a share in it. But uh, the wonderful Mark Austin's left and Richard Frediani looked after her. And the wonderful Alistair Stewart is there as well. I saw a picture of him on Facebook. Fabulous newscasters, very, very, very talented people. And we take our hats off to you guys, definitely. Right. Um, I know you probably can't play music because of copyright, Scotty, but for my Xmas present, can you play the old Moose Loose jingle? Bring back some good memories from my teenage years playing on the videogram. I'll tell you what, John, if you get onto Scotty McClure's um, YouTube channel, there's uh, about 270,000 people have been on there. And uh, you'll have great fun live on Facebook. This is the way ahead. Merry Christmas, says Jerry Carty. Jerry, I think it is. Perhaps we don't need to bother with television companies and radio companies and uh, sitting in front of these people who, uh, you know, don't necessarily know a good thing. If they see it, you're good at that, Scotty. Keep sharing, folks, says Jim Stephen Gibb. Christopher Anthony Smith's watching. Michael McGuigan's watching. Yvonne Boyd McLennan. Merry Christmas, Scotty. Hope you're well and have a lovely day tomorrow and two kisses. I hope everyone has a lovely day tomorrow. And if you're in hospital, if you're suffering, 
If you feel lonely about things, please, please do not worry, because we are with you. Scotty McClure is thinking about you. The nation are thinking about you. If you've had a tough time, if you've been harmed in any way, if you've been scammed for money, then, uh, you know, any of these sort of things, please think strength, strength, strength. The world is full of wonderful, wonderful people. I've only met one bad man in my whole life. And as I say, he knows who he is. Wishing all our little angels in heaven a happy Christmas, says Julianne Scott. Julianne, I was um, touring the Cathedral of Christ the King in Liverpool one Saturday afternoon, and there was a little memorial to all the children. It was very, very moving. Liverpool, of course, has two wonderful cathedrals, in case one gets nicked. And um, they've got the um, Anglican Cathedral, started in about 1908. Giles Gilbert Scott finished in the early 1970s. And uh, they've got the Cathedral of Christ the King, the Mersey Funnel. Beautiful, beautiful building, though, of course. And uh, I was in there, and I remember seeing the memorial to um, Archbishop Warlock, Derek Warlock. I can remember when Derek Warlock was the Catholic Archbishop of Liverpool, and David Shepherd was the Anglican Bishop. Marvellous, marvellous people. David Shepherd, the great cricketer. Evening, Scotty. We have one upset boy in here. Papa didn't get William any socks this year, and he's in a huff. William, get out of the cream puff, I say. Socks are no problem. Can I get a shout out for my neighbour up the stair? Nicola here. Sheer, 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 uh, says Jim Stephen Gibb. Of course you can. Nicola, up the stair. Oi, stop the noise up the stair. And um, I lost my daughter when she was three years of age, says Julianne. Julianne, she is in the next room, as I say. They are never far away from us. And look at the fact that you had her for three years and she was with us. Scott Wilson's watching. How marvellous. Tommy is watching Barbara Ann Haig. All I want for Christmas is my two front teeth, says Barbara Ann. How fantastic. There's Ian Walker. Tremendous. I'm going to see if I can sort this camera, folks, because I seem to be looking up at you. I don't mind that. I don't mind looking up at you. Heather Carr, Merry Christmas, Scotty. Julianne Scott, so true, Scotty, she says, and she is quite right. These wee ones are with us. Bless them, I say, but the fact that you've had them with you and you got to know them and they got to know you, Julianne. That's the marvellous thing. Hi, Scotty. I've still got a video of you, audience at Scotty McClue. Have a fabulous Christmas, says Brian Sweeney from the Sweeney clan. Brian, I had a lovely message. If you're watching there, there, Jim Robbins watching a tremendous tremendous man, lovely, lovely character, anything to do with IT, Jim Robin is your man, marvellous. Merry Christmas, Scotty, says Nicola Malone McPhail. It's lovely to hear from you, Nicola. Are you any relation to Dan McPhail, the engineer on the vital spark? Andy Taylor's watching. Hello, Andy. Dinky do to you. Merry Christmas to all you wonderful people, gorgeous people, tremendous stuff. I'm going to sort this out here. I think I've got a plan. I've got a cunning plan, as we would say. Let me see if I can sort out this camera thing for some reason. I'll just, oh, sorry about that. Oh, dear. Is that any better? For some reason, um, as I say, I seem to be looking up at you. I love spiritualism, Scotty, says Steph McElherrin. I can understand it. The spirits are there. I don't think um, when we go that we've gone. All that experience can't go to waste. Bless you for helping people, mate, says Mark Cruden. Mark, bless you for helping people. A very fine man that you are. Hi, Scotty. Dinky do, says Jim Robin. Dinky do, Jim Robin. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you do for so many people, Jim Robin. You're a marvellous man. And thank you for all your wonderful IT work. Thousands and millions of people have got to appreciate that. Can you play that tune, the moose loose, about the hoose? <laughs> all prepared for the Harvest Festival, says Gavin. Fizzackles. Fizzackly. I beg your pardon. Fizzackly. Now, is that your actual name, Gavin Fizzackly, or are you from Fizzackly in Liverpool? Jimmy Dewishy. Merry Christmas when it comes, Scotty. What's your plans? Lots of plans. I'm doing the Queen's speech, the Morris Scotty, because she's got the flu. So I've stepped in, says Ian Walker. Oh, that'll be a treat for us all, Ian. Fantastic. Brian Sweeney. Cool. Take care, Scotty. Mary Carty. Hi, Scotty. Have a lovely Christmas. 
<laughs> Karen Mackay is watching. Uh, Peter McQueer is watching. And Mary Xmas McClue. Thank you very much, Peter McQueer. Sylvia Scott is watching. Dinky doo to you, Sylvia. And a very warm welcome to Scotty McClue's Christmas message just for the nation telling it like it is, I say. Uh, how are we doing, folks? I only popped up to say hi. And perhaps we'll be doing our tomorrow night as well because Christmas has formed on a Sunday night. And Sunday night means only one thing, Scotty McClue live on Facebook Live. Sylvia Scott says she's got a cold. We so have a broad day, Mr. McClue, says Karen Mackay. I will do my best, Karen. I shall tell you that. Now, I hope all of you are having a lovely time. I'm so sorry for those of you who have lost loved ones recently. And uh, even today, um, you know, some great people going on the next step of their journey. Um, so, uh, you know, I think to myself, life goes on as well thank you to all the doctors and nurses thank you to all our soldiers and sailors and airmen who are out at sea who are out in the desert who are in other parts of the world we send love to you um from all of us here and of course we're talking to the world hi scotty the modern night um that would be fine for me says ian sylvia scott says no not me the queen was well, the queen that's got the cold it's not sylvia Sorry about that. I've bought you a cuddly wuddly for Christmas, Scotty. So Stephen Nunley. Stephen, that is lovely of you. Thank you very much. Very, very thoughtful. So there we are. And uh, who else have we got here? Um, my goodness, I hadn't expected so many of you. I thought I'll just pop up, record a wee Christmas message, because people will be between carols from King's, uh, from King's College, Cambridge. Uh, lovely tonight. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And um, also, they'll be watching Coronation Street. There'll be major viewers for that. But it's incredible, the number of viewers for Scotty McClue. Laura Sargenal is watching. Merry Christmas, says Laura. And three kisses and a smiley face on its side. Does that work when you put um, a colon and a dash in the middle and then one bracket for the smiley face? Remember and leave a whiskey for Santa Scotty. Yes, we wondered about Santa's sanity when we were talking because, you know, there's, there's 16 windows and three doors in the house and he comes down the chimney. And then a mince pie, a mince pie and a sherry in every house. <laughs> you know, Mark says, Elisa saying, can you ask Scotty to tell Santa she's been a good girl? I'll bet she has. And I hope Santa's good to you, Elise. So there we are. If you're wanting, it's a little bit... Um, uh, Patty now because it's been around a few years but still as current as well you'll hear Scotty McClure's Scott FM phone in that we dedicated to all the wee ones so you've got tinies coming on and saying hi and I've put that up on Facebook for you so have a look for that the RSPCA are in full alert as thousands of links have been seen in Glasgow thousands of links I get that that's fantastic and some reindeer food as well tremendous i once looked up firelighters in the internet and got a thousand matches uh you get that sort of thing i um was wondering about maps backwards but somebody said no that will just be sam so there we are and uh, some reindeer food yes now reindeer food julianne scott very very important i see my darling excellent so there we are so tomorrow i hope you all have a wonderful time and uh, i shall certainly be looking out for you and um i uh, i hope santa's good to, to all you boys and girls that are watching if you're telling him you've been good then he will know jim stephen gibb and six others has shared the video thanks guys have a share keep sharing and sharing and sharing I think it's very, very important. I think we get up to several thousand people. And just to let you know, almost 70,000 have watched Scotty McClure since we started doing Facebook videos. Now, it's a Facebook video. It's what it is. It's not a spoof. It's not anything fancy. It's Scotty McClure on Facebook Live. And that's what it is. Uh, don't put uh, reindeer food in your lawn. Poisons the wildlife, says Angie Thompson. Right. Give us a joke, Scotty, says Jim Stephen Gibb. Oh, my goodness, Jim, you know I don't know any jokes. 
I was trying to get the bus into town today and I said to the driver, how much is the entertainment? Two quid. I said, I've only got 150. I'll have to run alongside you. So I ran alongside him. I said to him at the next set of lights. I said, how much is it now? He went, £2.50. I said, you told me it was two quid. That's why I'm running alongside you. And he said, no, no, you're running the wrong way, Scotty. We have gone out of town. Gavin Fasakli says, I introduced Nick Margerison to your show all these years ago. My goodness, Gavin, Nick Margerison. There's a big name in broadcasting, a super guy. Fantastic, lovely, lovely chap. And you'll find there's a Scotty McClue interview with Nick Margerison. Ian Walker says, uh, the RSPCA are in England and Scotland. We have the SSPCA. Excellent. Yes, indeed. And they do a wonderful job as well. The Scottish Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Alan Brown says, I promise to make you walk home next time you're sick. Now, this is a reference <laughs> to <laughs> 1992 when Alan Brown was a student with me and uh, we were trainee teachers and... Um, he had the flu, and I said to him, the best thing for the flu, I didn't actually get the money for the bus, said the best thing for the flu is a good walk. So the poor soul walked and walked and walked. We were at Jordan Hill College. We got to as far as Jordan Hill. He sat down a wall, and he said, I promise you, if I ever have an opportunity, McClure, and you are ill, I will make you walk. Anyway, I took him in and bought him a meal when we got to the nearest hostelry. <laughs> and uh, a light refreshment and his flu seemed to disappear it flew a wall uh, hello says Jarvis Butler Jarvis you're a strange one why don't you pop your picture up I shared your Mozart's overture today lovely marriage of figure the old gins are the best gins says Sylvia Scott that's what I do I tell the old ones Sylvia and um, Defo, that was a chestnut, Scotty, says Jim, Stephen Gibb. Oh, we've got plenty of these, the old chestnuts, you know. And um, they asked me what my wife uh, did the other day. I said, well, it's actually quite hard to say. She sells seashells on the seashore. Laura Sajanar and 10 others have just shared the video. Thank you very much for that, my darlings. Very much appreciated. Keep sharing the Christmas message. I think it's very important. But have you not got other things you're wanting to watch at the moment? I mean, there are major, major movies on the telly. I had a treat the other day. I went into a well-known superstore. And there they had old British movies. So I've treated myself. <laughs> treated myself to Where Eagles Dare. Because I have two videos of Where Eagles Dare. And one uh, is missing the start, and the other is missing the end. So I've got the bit in the middle. I know what happens in the middle, but the start and the end are missing. And it was a friend of mine who's sadly no longer with us, but he was uh, staying for the night in Sheffield. He'd come down from Scotland. He uh, was going to help out with computers, which were an absolute mystery in these days. Still are to an extent. But um, he was going to help out with that. And um, when I got in, I said, uh, he said, oh, I think I may have recorded something over that. <laughs> I'll tell you. Scotty, the usual place for Christmas Day, um, 8 a.m., says uh, Mark, uh, Mark Cruden. Bit early for me, Mark, but you never know. Java says, are we not excited tonight? Is this not just another great treat tonight? Absolutely. Zulu. A classic, says Julianne Scott. I'll tell you what you'll get in Zulu. You'll get Ivor Emmanuel singing, um, you know, uh, what's, he, what's he singing? Oh, the very, very famous one. It's so famous. My goodness, it's me. Uh, da, 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 dee, 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 dee. Men of Harlech. There it says, back it goes. And the Ivor Emmanuel version. I mean, Ivor Emmanuel, wonderful, wonderful singer. If you ever get the chance, if you're into singers, you ever get the chance to hear Ivor Emmanuel, um, then you'll hear him in Zulu singing Men of Harlech uh, when they've got all the, uh, all the bright uniforms. It was after the Boer War that the British did away with the red jacket because they were just picking them off. Gary Crossin, great to see you, Scotty. You're looking great, sir. Um, absolutely. Uh, so there we are. And uh, Pat and Mick were walking down the street. Pat says to Mick, there's a wig lying down there. Pat says, no, it's just F, it's hid. 
Uh, Scotty, you're better ready to go down all the chimneys. Santa McClue. <laughs> I, uh, I played Santa this time last year. I spent a day playing Santa. Uh, Max Boyce was a good Welsh comedian. Yes, Max Boyce, brilliant, Julianne, absolutely. Oh, yes. Nosda, I say to you. Nosda. And Yaki Da. Um, who else have we got? Uh, oh, 12 of you have just shared the video. That is excellent. There we are. Now, I firmly believe that this has got a massive, massive future. I mean, I'm something of a little guinea pig. As you can see, I might not resemble one, but I'm something of a little guinea pig because I think that um, Facebook Live has got a tremendous future. It really has. And uh, we'll build up the content as time goes on. We're building up a massive, massive show. As I say, 70,000 have seen all these. And get on, spread everything around that you see with McClue on it. Very, very important. Scotty, you need to do the late night phone in again. Are you not on the radio anymore, says Peter McQueer? Uh, I was on the radio last year. Jarvis says, oh, don't flatter yourself. I don't know what he means by that, because I understand Mozart. Scotty McLean, am I on the naughty list, says Gary Cross. Not at all, Gary, certainly not. Um, I hope you have a good Christmas, says Gordon Bennett. Gordon Bennett! Uh, so there you are. I think Gordon Bennett was a famous racing sponsor or a racing driver. And when a car shot past at speed, meow, people went, Gordon Bennett! Craig Duncan is watching. Dinky do Craig. Lovely to hear from you. Am I looking up, folks? Can one of you write a message? Does it look as if I'm looking up all the time? Is that what's going on? Yeah, there we are. There seems to be something about looking up. How does that look? Is that any good? No. Let me see. How's that looking? Any better? No, I'm still, I'm still looking up. I wonder if I've got... Do you know what I think's happened? Watch this, folks. Ah! <laughs> Silly old fool, McClure. There we go. Now, I think, does that look better? Because I think that's what's happened. I think that is actually what has happened. I think we've got something the wrong way about. How's that, folks? How does that look? Is that any better? Does that, uh, does that look as if I'm looking at you now? Is that far more normal? The only thing is, what we need to do is see if we can. And this is a bit of a battle. How does that look? Is that any better? I say, but the trouble is, I've got to see if I can get the messages coming up at the same time. So I'm going to keep turning this round. This is an experiment, folks, so look upon this as uh, as work in progress, right? This is actually work in progress. No, I think that's right, guys. I think if we do it that way, um, that's probably right. Mm, very interesting. Right, uh, let's, let's try this one again. Sorry, you'll all be shouting. You'll be going, leave it alone! Leave it alone, McClure! Right, um, there we are. Now, what happens to that lot? They should come back, uh, I would think. Nope, that doesn't seem to be right either. Does that, does that look better? Does that, does that look better to you? But I think what's happened now is the scripts are the wrong way around. So I can't actually get hold of the scripts. If we can change the scripts, which they might do. There we go. Can we change the scripts? Uh, anyway, we'll see what happens there. So, where were we? Uh, how does your hops, Jim, say? I'll have to look at the scripts again, folks. There we are. Upside down, says Angie. So am I upside down? No, says Stephen. How does your hat stay on, says Jim Robin? You're fittering, Scotty. A shout out to all the offshore workers, Scotty. Very, very important. Right. How's that? Is that better? Uh, you're like a Roman candle. Oh dear, says Jarvis Butler. Upside down, says Charles McLaughlin. Well, you might all be upside down, but I don't know. Uh, you were doing the way you were, says Steph. So just leave it alone. So there we are. Is that all right, Steph? Is that better? That's it, says Steph. So if I leave it like that, that's not getting on your thrapnies, folks, is it? Uh, so there we are. Now, 
Um, that's it, says Angie. Ah, marvellous. It's just as well you're all there. This is proper interactive broadcasting, guys. And this has got a massive, massive future. I mean, I will, you know, do a lot of work. I will improve on a lot of stuff. I mean, Aristu says, we love you, Scotty. That's marvellous. Ha, says Jarvis Butler. Ha, that was a roller coaster camera. Ha, 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 says Laura. And do we kisses. Now, what we're going to do then at uh, the future. So, um, you don't have to, but if you happen to be a wee bit flush with money and you've got a spare fiver or tenner, uh, go to Scotty McClue's website, www.scotty-mcclue.com. And um, if you don't mind, Scotty, the pictures behind you are upside down. Ah, there we are. And uh, if you don't mind, um, then uh, you can stick a few quid into PayPal and that will help us to buy little bits of equipment to improve the show. So, uh, you know, if you've got a spare five or a spare quid, um, I get very, very humbled when some of you who I know are financially challenged send me two or three pounds. It is lovely, lovely, lovely of you. And thank you for that because we are building something very, very special here. Have you heard of Sherry, Scotty? So Stephen Nunnally. Do you know what? Sherry's an interesting one, Stephen. I'm not a big Sherry fan. I have, actually haven't had any booze for a year. A matching tie and old jersey tonight, says Jarvis. Absolutely, Jarvis. Do you like that? So there we go. Christmas tie. And um, also, no, the pictures are fine, says Stephen. <laughs> Don't listen to all that lot winding you up, McClue. So there you go. The pictures are absolutely fine. So, as I say, if you want to, you don't have to, because remember, Scotty McClue has always accepted applause or derision on his own merits. So it's a free service. But, as I say, if you'd like to contribute to the program financially, then you can do. <coughs> can I send gingies, says Ian. I don't know what you mean by that. I'm out in the taxis in East School Bride. It's awfully quiet, says James Barr. Yeah, we'll be a bit quiet tonight in the buses. When you see the drivers, you go, are you busy tonight? Ah, oh, it's dead, dead. I'm telling you. Merry Crimblesar, says Chloe Banning. Dinky do to you, Chloe. Lovely to hear from you, and I hope you have a wonderful Christmas tomorrow. And all the Banning family, all your families, guys. I hope you have a nice time. It's funny, I was in a shop yesterday. Not a wise move, but a friend of mine said, I'm going up to the shops if you want to chummy. And uh, we were going round the shops, and I watched a couple arguing over cheese. And he was saying, well, would you not be better getting some? She goes, well, I've already got the brie. And they were at that irritating stage following each other around. Yang, 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 yang. And I thought, oh, my goodness me. And uh, you need uh, to have a nice time at Christmas. What are you having for your crumbly dindins, says Jarvis Butler. Oh, good stuff, Jarvis. I always remember being with my mother after my father passed away about 20 years ago. And she said, oh, I don't know if we want a turkey. And, so why don't you get some roast beef and she said, well, it's not very traditional, is it? And I said, no, come on, we'll get a nice rib of beef. And we had that, and it was delicious. Scotty, remember the taxi drivers have all got gold toilet seats? Yes, £350,000 a year, I suspect, you make from driving a taxi. We worked it all out one night, so don't all start shouting and bawling. And uh, it's not as if you're maintaining your cabs. I've followed a few of you. You think you were drawing a tar boiler behind you? I think your injectors are all getting stuck. But um, no, because uh, this guy says, we work 20 years, 20 years a day. If you work it out, it works out at 350 grand a year. I know they'll have to pay a bit of diesel and a bit of uh, radio. Your radio, car for four. Anybody in the uh, vicinity? Anybody in the vicinity of the barracks, if you can get in there, pick up Scotty McClure. We saw two women fighting, and I mean fisticuffs, over a taxi outside a well-known superstore here. The other day, other supermarkets are available, says Angie. Yes, it's ridiculous, isn't it? The start, and, and women are the worst, and they're very difficult to separate them as well. They, they go a bit bananas, so just be careful, guys. Lol, says Ian Walker. Lol. This is class, says Jarvis Butler. No, you're class. Jarvis, what's your little blue lapel badge, says Gavin. It's just a wee badge I have. It's a wee Edelweiss. I think it's rather nice. It's very catching. It's a wee, a wee Edelweiss badge. Uh, can you give my niece a shout out? Shannon Tate. Share, 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 says Jim Stephen Gibb. Jim Stephen Gibb, are you a famous bagpiper? I've seen your bagpipes. 
Glen Carla Castle's the one for you. Second bit. There's no more status quo, Scotty. Yes, I saw the sad death of um, our status quo member tonight at the age of 16. Bless him, I say. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Condolences to his family and to those about. Uh, his son had posted on Facebook and said, you know, to all of you, he's a very famous pop star, but obviously to me, he was dad. Uh, when my mum took us shopping at Christmas, my mum would ask anyone in the queue if they were heading our way. They don't do that now. Mum had manners, says Angie. Yes, she did, Angie. And uh, sometimes you've got to start the chat, though. I loved being down in Yorkshire. I worked in Sheffield twice. Once on uh, Radio Hallam, F Radio Hallam, Hallam FM, and the other at Magic AM. And I had the most wonderful time on my life. We had a huge program going on the uh, FM for Hallam and the medium wave for Magic. And uh, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And the lovely thing, Yorkshire people have got what Scottish people have lost a little bit of. They chat all the time. So you're at a bus stop and say, oh, hello, love. Uh, as boss come? You say, I know, I don't think so. Ah, I've been waiting a while here. And uh, the next thing, you get a life story several times. And it's the same in Scotland as well, of course. It's actually the same all over the world. What I will say to you for Christmas, guys, remember everyone smiles in the same language. Very, very important. If I've been looking up all the time, is that better when I do that? Uh, you'd be good at playing the kazoo, Scotty. Lovely, says Jarvis Butler. Merry Xmas, old friend. Best wishes, says Big Jim. I have to tell you a lovely story talking about Yorkshire. It was a chap, a farmer, and he'd made a lot of money out of the land. He'd bought up land and what have you. Very, very wealthy. And he went down to a very famous jewellers in London. And uh, he walked in and the jeweller said, Good afternoon, sir. Can I help you? And he said, I, I'd like you to make a model of uh, me, me Jack Russell, me late Jack Russell. Little candy. He said, right, yes. And uh, what sort of size are we talking about? Ah, I want to buy 18 inches high. 18 inches high. And I said, uh, right, so little candy, a little Jack Russell, 18 inches high. Mm -hmm. And um, all right, we can do that. He said, now, what sort of metal? You know, we've got all sorts of metals we could make him out. Aye, you make him out of solid gold, because that's what little candy were. Solid gold, that's what he meant to me. He said, right, sir, yes. So you want an 18-inch high model of this little Jack Russell you're showing us in the photo here called Candy. He said, now, do you want him 18 carat? He went, no, I'll have him chewing a bone. Right, many extras, old friends, says Jim Thompson, and best wishes from Big Jim. Absolutely, Jim. Um, as always, go shopping with a sea captain, because there's no cues with a skipper. There's no cues of the skipper. Give us a Christmas song, please, Scotty. Merry Christmas. <coughs> Martin, I can't really give you a Christmas song. Who are you supporting uh, next weekend, Scotty? Says Peter. Ah, Peter, I might support uh, the range stick of the Celt Jairs. I think we should start a team in Glasgow called Glasgow United. There's Charles McLaughlin. Ha ha! Says Charles. Did you like that one, Charles? I'm just reaching down here, guys. I've just spotted something. Ah! Oh! There's the old... Uh, there you are. There's the old um, squeeze box. But um, I don't know if we can manage something with the squeeze box. <laughs> There you go. So there's a wee Christmas card on the squeeze box. Uh, a bit ad hoc, of course, because I just saw it there. 
Merry Christmas, Scotty. I'm working 12 hours tomorrow to look after fail and elderly residents in my care home to give them a happy Christmas. Lynn, Lynn Finlayson, you are an angel, you are a saint, and that is fantastic. And these people will really, really appreciate it. They are lovely people. They just happen to have been on the earth for a long time, and it could happen to any of us. I mean, I wouldn't mind making um, 102 or something like that. Not many years to go, of course. And <laughs> Dominic the donkey is the Italian Christmas donkey, says Ian Walker. Well, you know what the donkeys in Blackpool get for their lunch, don't you? Half an hour. Uh, what a treat, says Jarvis. Take the floor, Scotty, says Ian Walker. Yes, yes, absolutely. If anybody's watching from Radio Scotland and you'd like Scotty McLeod to take over, take the floor. Fine, you'd make a fine busker, says Peter McQuay. Well, I'm, I'm training to busk in the metro in Paris. And uh, there's a little chap used to run round the metro in Paris. Very small guy, and he was well known, actually. I think he was, he was known as the metronome. And um, in Paris, if you're busking on the metro, you really have to be good. Give us a bunch of time, says Jarvis Butler. Oh, excellent stuff. I've been rearranging my spice cabinet recently, and somebody said, where do you get the time? And I said, um, it's just next to the sage. Uh, now, uh, who else have we got here? Oh, fantastic stuff. Nancy Mingus, Sand Sandra Boswell, and you're all sharing Scotty McClure. I think that's fantastic, guys. Thank you very much for that. It really is appreciated. Uh, right, legend, Scotty, this is Jim Stephen Kemp. <laughs> well, it wasn't terribly good accordion bling, but I can't really get moving properly. I'll play it properly for you, and, uh, and we'll get a, a, a tune out of it at some point. Uh, so there you are. Right, uh, it looks like it's time for me to push off. If you can share this Christmas message, guys, get it out there to the nation. Tell them what is what. And um, let's try it the other way again. How, how is it if we do it that way? Is that any better? What do you think? Is that better if I do it that way? No, no, not really. No. <laughs> right, I'll put it back upside down. Now, guys, I hope you have a lovely, lovely evening. Whatever you're doing, if you're going out to see Granny or Auntie Fanny, look after her. Were you ever on the CB radio, Scotty? One nine for a copy. What am I hitting you with for a rig check, please? Uh, this is the big SC. Uh, it says the Mentholiptus man can dying. Yes, I remember. Do you remember Metal Mickey and all these people that used to get on the CB? Give Scotty a couple of bobs of Steph McElhern. Absolutely. Get on to PayPal at www.scotty-mcclue.com. Stick in a quick 50k. Oh dear, if you go, have a wonderful Christmas. God bless, says Jarvis Butler. A very sweet character, this guy. We don't know who he has been around for years, but we had to ban him sometimes because he just got a wee bit cheeky. Um, but it was always for something small, like yawning when I was talking. People never will learn, will they? Play the tune, says Jim, the tune. Oh yes, I'll sing you the song. I'll sing you the song before I go. All the best, Scotty, and diggy you news know, Stephen Nunnally. Now listen, to all of you out there around the world, if you've never heard of Scotty McClue until tonight, I'll spell it for you, capital S, small c-o-double-t-i-e, that's the Scotty, the McClue, capital M, small c, capital c-l-u-e, that is the McClue. I am the world's top broadcaster, it is official. I hold the record of 460,000 calls to a radio station in one week, that is official as well. And uh, what you see is what you get. So don't let's have any of your nonsense going, what is this? Is it a spoof? Is it a, a comedy? Is it serious? Is it political? Is it, you know, where everything, the Scotty McClure massive mighty megaphone in is everything. So there you are. It's everything you've always wanted rolled into one broadcasting at its very finest. So there you are. Good night, Scotty. Enjoy the morrow, and I hope you and your family have a lovely day. Thanks, Andrew. Very much appreciated to all of you, as I say. Don't lose sight of what Christmas is all about, about the birth of the Christ child, the birth of um, Jesu Christ, the birth of a baby, the birth of a new life. In other words, a sense of hope for the world. And I say to all the world leaders, I mean, I'm very fortunate. I get to teach at a school that was set up for world leaders to make them responsible for their actions. And I say to all the world leaders, if you're watching Scotty McClure right now, which you may well be, because we are global and we go around the world, you know, keep the heat. 
with a saying in Scotland called, keep the heed. And I would say to world leaders, when you're watching Scotty McClue, keep the heed, guys. Right, I've just noticed a bright light in the sky. Oh, it's the moon. I'd better put gold, frankincense and myrrh. It's not myrrh, it's myrrh. Back in the box. Have a great day tomorrow. Dinky do everyone. If you've got any dream interpreters watching, I could do with a bit of a favour. I have a recurring dream I've had for many, many, many years. It's not unpleasant or anything. I'm at an oasis in the desert in a very dark blue night. And then I just hear this very soft sound approaching and a camel train. And they're all wrapped up. They've got their faces covered and what have you. And they just amble on by. They're not stopping at the oasis. And all these beautiful camels, magnificent creatures. And they just amble on by. And all you can hear is these big soft hooves in the sand when I turn round. And they just sort of stare at me as they go past. So if there's any dream interpreters out there could tell me what that's about, that should be fantastic. So there we are. You should get on BBC Scotland, says Peter McQuarrie. Absolutely. And um, Google it, says Angie Thompson. Well, 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 good, uh, good point, actually. Our old friend Google out there. Yes. It means you need new slippers, Scotty. Camel hair ones. <laughs> I remember saving up £50 for a camel haired coat. And somebody said you can go for three days without water with that coat. There's Charles McNeil. Good evening, Scotty, sir. Dinky do to you. You must be the Oasis, says Jarvis Butler. Ah, the Oasis in a thirsty world. I see an Oasis in a desert where we need culture and creativity. I am, of course, your creative and cultural ambassador. In 2017, it will all happen. There are big, big, big discussions. So if you can think, what should Scotty McClue do next? Do let me know. I think a national phone in the answer. I think it'd be wonderful. Merry Christmas from the United States. And God bless, says Dee Nelson. Dinky doo dee. Bless you and bless all our fellow Americans. All our brothers and sisters out there in America. We don't, on the Scotty McClue program, have any barriers at all. So race, creed, colour, religion, background, height, weight, you name it, you can be it. Camel hair, no chance, it's got to be cashmere. Yes, but you need the mere cash for that, George. If you're having cashmere, you need mere cash. And love to everybody in America, love to everybody in Australia as well. To my old chum, Dave Shearer, a great radio programmer out in Australia. National phone in would be fantastic. Scotty says Barbara Ann Haig. And yes, because we could discuss anything. I think the problem is you've got these people uh, controlling radio stations now and they're, they're sort of not thinking big picture. They're just saying, look, just do what you're told. Put the songs into your computer. Play the songs. You might mess up the National Grid with a phone in, Scotty, says Ian Walker. So what, Ian? Um, this is what it's all about. We need to get the nation talking. Everybody wants to talk. And everything that's happened in 2016, it makes me laugh because uh, I was putting up recently what needs to be sorted out for radio. And uh, somebody said, listen, this is 2016. And I thought, why are you telling me the date? It has absolutely zero bearing. Changes in radio, a chair and a microphone. That's what broadcasting is, guys. So if you want to broadcast, there's room for every day. I used to say this to people who wanted to stab you in the back and get your job. I'd say, you don't need to stab me in the back because there's room for every day uh, in broadcasting. David Russell's watching, pardon me there. And, uh, oh my goodness, what have we got here? This is tremendous, actually. It's just hit me that we are global, of course, and it's all happening out there. I know. I mean, I know we're global. I, I, I know. I do understand all this. Now, to all of you, and patterns and knowledge, says Jarvis Butler. Absolutely. Knowledge is power, I say, Jarvis. And it's all out there. It's all on Scotty McClure's head, because if you think the big phone-ins, um, it has to come off the top of the head. We didn't have... Google, we didn't have search engines 
uh, in those days. Sorry I'm late getting on. I was at the local Christmas service. Merry Christmas to yourself. And all your following, says David Russell. Not at all. A lot of people will be going out to watch night services tonight. You're never alone with a microphone, Scotty, says David Seals. Absolutely, David. You have said it, chum. Uh, so there we go. Right, you must have had enough of me by now, so it's time to push off to all of you. Can I say, I send you love. I send you every blessing. And I say to you, have a wonderful, wonderful, happy Christmas. Spare a thought for everyone in the world, because we are all equal, right? That's the whole thing about it. We are all Jock Tamson's bins. I remember finding a title that I could use, because there's titles if you go back in my family. And I said to my dear late father, who was a wonderful man, very balanced, the right sense of values, I said, could I use this? He said, I wouldn't bother with that. You'll end up selling tickets for things. <laughs> Jarvis Butler, there you are. Yes, the most dangerous thing I've ever done, Jarvis, is having after eight at half past seven. Sing the tune, right? God bless you, Sir Steph McElhern. Love to you all, guys. Mwah. Mwah. I love you all. So from me, Scotty McClure, to all of you, have a great Christmas. Happy Christmas. Dinky-doo. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody, of Wittelzain, au revoir, and a cheerio. Ta-da, lost, dinky-doo.